The holidays are here and HelloFresh makes this busy time of year easier than ever with chef-crafted recipes and pre-portioned ingredients delivered right to your door. Get 21 free meals plus free shipping with code MLM21 at hellofresh.com slash MLM21. Get your f***ing ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You That's have to, so true. You have to surround yeah. yourself with people that want to work. Princess House looks like any other perfect picture, homey MLM that encourages stay-at-home moms to scam their friends. Sorry, mm. <clears throat> so early in the episode too. I meant throw parties with their friends. Apparently, when they were founded back in 1963, Princess House specialized in crystal. So it's no wonder that their glasses are probably the nicest and definitely most expensive things they sell. A quick search of Princess House Crystal on Etsy brings up a whole slew of vintage plates, a nativity, cups, wine glasses, champagne flutes, you name it, they've got it. They look like something your grandma might've owned, but hey, they were founded in 1963, so I can't say I'm that surprised. Now, instead of old timey crystal glasses, they've got just about everything else kitchen related sold by their distributors. They're like an ever so slightly older version of the Pampered Chef. And for any of you who recall that episode, Pampered Chef isn't nearly as predatory or as dangerous as Herbalife, other supplement MLMs, LuLaRoe, Young Living, Beachbody, at least in my opinion. Yeah, the business model is problematic without a doubt, but that's about as far as it goes, right? Well, Princess House is just a tiny bit different. Sure, they've got basic kitchenware, but they aren't all that separated from Herbalife either. Both of them, from what I can see, have an overwhelming amount of Hispanic people as distributors, and they've got lawsuits to their name, like more than you would think. Princess House even has supplements too, which is very interesting. And I know many of you know how I feel about supplements. Though they don't seem to be nearly as known for this as they are their kitchen products, it's still a little bit weird that they sell those too. I went to Consumer Affairs to see if these kitchen products are worth the inflated price tags. Like seriously, let me give you an example. It's over $100 for a saucepan. But if they're really luxurious and meant to last a lifetime, then I would think that's worth it, right? Surprisingly, or perhaps unsurprisingly, cause you're here or listening to this episode, that's not really what reviewers are saying. Vivian said she owned the steamer brand new and it broke with pieces of glass shards flying out of it. Webb claims that they owned a whole host of products, but said they simply weren't worth it and didn't even measure up to the things that he could buy at Home Depot. I did some pretty serious scrolling through this to look at all the reviews and almost every single review was negative. Like it was a little bit overwhelming, honestly. Some say that the dishes shattered, cracked, handles fell off, replacements were not given, they couldn't reach their salesperson and their satisfaction guarantee was a total joke. Needless to say, I don't think these products are worth the price just based on other people's reviews. Sure, there's not a ton of reviews on here, so it's possible that there isn't a fair representation of the company, but given how often reviewers of MLMs are actually just distributors, a fair representation can be pretty difficult to find in the first place. Are all of these negative reviews a sign of just how negative the company is behind the scenes? Like what else might they be hiding? Well, let's dive right into it and start with what I load the most about this company, how they target sellers. Hello and welcome to Multi-Level Mondays. I'm the Illuminati and today I'd like to chat about a slightly lesser known MLM called Princess House. Now, initially I couldn't actually find much on them. The founder, Charles Collis, was a co-owner of Armor Bronze and Silver Company, which is the largest manufacturer of copper and brass giftware. But a few years before that went under, he created Princess House to sell hand-blown glass and giftware. Reading that, I'm reminded of those Longa Burger baskets. It's such an oddly specific thing to become an MLM, but hey, I've said it before. If it can be sold to a downline, it probably will be. As the CEO, Connie Tang put it, our products have evolved. The company and brand have evolved from breakable to durable, from crystalware to cookware. With marketplace changes, preference changes, and even demographic changes to meet the needs of customers, consultants, and business owners, an evolution has occurred. And as innocent as all that sounds, somewhere along the way, Princess House began targeting Hispanic people specifically. Now, whether this was purposeful or a result of the community signing each other up as downlines, there's no denying that the sales force and company base are predominantly Hispanic. Tang seems pleased by this and says they have a first generation demographic that she hopes will expand to younger Hispanic sellers. If you go on TikTok and look up Princess House, chances are the clips you're going to see are in Spanish, by the way. Now, I did have someone help translate these for me so I can share what they're saying. In one, a woman named Jocelyn tells her audience that she had a friend who sold Princess House. 
This friend convinced her to get rid of her ninja blender, promising to get her a princess house brand instead, but they never did. And Jocelyn was annoyed and said she'd have to go to the store to get a cheaper one now because she didn't have a blender anymore. In a second one, the user Gemma says that Princess House is the worst investment she's made. She bought a nonstick pot and it's anything but nonstick and the seller has refused to help her too. Most of the comments tell this user that she just burned the food and blamed the company and she should try to wash her pot before complaining. Now, the rest of the TikToks show people using or selling Princess House products. Sometimes it even looks like they're stocking up judging by the amount of boxes you'll see in these videos. And to make it perfectly clear in case I'm not, it's not the sellers in particular I have an issue with here. It's the fact that they're being exploited. We've seen this with Herbalife. And while Princess House is an entirely different company, the business model is relatively the same. As a brief aside here, I wanna note that the terms Hispanic and Latino are not the same. According to Pew Research, Hispanics are people from Spain or Spanish speaking countries in Latin America, and Latinos are people from Latin America, regardless of language. If you hear both of these terms used throughout this episode, it's because I'm going on based on what my sources are saying and which community is being targeted by which MLM. Both Latino and Hispanic people have been mistreated by MLMs is really the overarching point here, but moving on. As we saw with Herbalife, Latino families who signed up lost a lot of money. Video testimonials given to the Wall Street firm Pershing Square show this. One former distributor told the camera that quote, the first thing they tell you is that you don't need a social security number to sign into this business. It seemed like the perfect job. So if this doesn't scream, we're going after people with a shaky immigration status so they can't sue us, then I don't know what does. It's one thing if a company is actually trying to help someone. It's another thing if they're purely focusing on people with limited legal means to avoid any recourse. If the first thing they say is you don't need a social security number, then that should set up a couple red flags, but that's just my thinking. Other former sellers say that they think that they felt like they had no recourse when they were scammed because if they spoke out, they risked exposing their immigration status. It's possible that there are many more immigrants being recruited to sell MLM products and we simply aren't aware of it yet for these types of reasons. There's far more than shame at stake here should someone choose to speak out and these companies are aware of that. Again, I've got no idea for sure if this is what the Princess House MLM does, But still, reading that they have such a high Hispanic base and seeing all of these TikToks in Spanish, it does raise a few red flags for me. But how does Princess House do this? How are they making all these promises? Well, let's take a look. This is probably my least favorite thing about Princess House, their start your business page. To be fair, this is probably my least favorite thing about most MLMs, but theirs is especially infuriating. Now I've looked at dozens of these sites by now, all of them making a variety of promises about how you can choose your hours, how much you're gonna make, where you work, be your own boss, babe, you get the idea. And these other companies, when I look at their stuff, they're at like about a seven, right? But Princess House cranks that bitch up to like a 14. Not only do they say that you're a boss babe in control of your own future and finances, but they actually have a sliding scale that'll tell you all the things you need to do in order to make money with their company. At the very start is 500 a month, which is only four parties. That seems easy, right? Well, that doesn't account for any downline you may need to have, the products you're buying, how much you need to sell, or the cost of those parties. Absolutely no expenses are added there. And listen, I've seen some really misleading income claims before, but this one has to be one of the shittiest I've ever seen. And I'm not gonna mince words here because it's a waste of everyone's time to do so. We all know that it's impossible to really make money in an MLM without a downline. That's how this business model thrives. And while yes, you can get a check in the mail from sales alone, but any actual earnings are pretty negligible. But they've got all these beautiful, colorful graphics and empty words that won't tell the full story because the full story is not fun to tell. The fact that you start at one party a week is also a bit of a joke. If I had a friend throwing one party a month, I'd eventually get fucking tired of it and tell him to shut up and suck it with the nonstick pans already. But Princess House somehow thinks that I have enough friends to invite to four parties a month, consistently four a month, not just do four and like call it a day, but for every single month. Plus, if their attitude is, oh, you can throw it at a friend's house, why would anyone agree to that? Like if I had a friend who goes, oh, hey, I wanna sell some nonstick pants. Can I like come to your house and do that? I'd be like, no, I'm going to be wrapped up in a blanket, having like real warm hours on the floor on the weekends. And I wanna be left alone. Like do not come over here to try and sell some pots and pans. 
Like, like I'm serious, okay? Like, do you know anyone that you could really walk up to, feel comfortable with, with just being like, hey, can I throw a little get together at your place a couple times a month to try and sell pots and pans? I don't, but maybe that's because I also know my friends would probably be like, what is wrong with you, Blair? But maybe this is just me. But looking at the numbers, it's no wonder that the sales model is just not viable. And yes, of course, the amount of parties does balloon when you use the income slider. So if you wanna make $2,500 a month, again, with no expenses calculated, then you need to throw and make sales at 16 parties a month. So to make that easy, that's about one party every other day. And if you do agree to be a host, it's not as if you get paid for that either, by the way. You just get extremely overpriced products at a discount. Personally, I don't think saying that a stock pot has a $600 value and offering it to a host for $150 is really the same thing as giving them a $450 discount because I bet that pot is maybe worth $50 or something. Now, these are far from the only issues I see with income claims though. Back in 2017, Tina or Truth in Advertising actually investigated Princess House and has a massive list on their website of their claims. Now, what's interesting is most of the claims haven't been taken down either, despite the investigation taking place. I guess Princess House just can't be bothered to really rectify the situation here. On Facebook, a woman named Joanne told her page that if anyone joined the MLM, they can potentially earn $1,800 in profit. And that's right, profit alone. So this woman said 1,800 in profit in the next few months, as well as $1,300 worth of products. Others claimed that they made 600 a month for only about 12 hours worth of work and others promised vacations. Uh, Funny or maybe pathetically enough, some of the claims that Tina listed weren't from distributors at all, but they actually came from Princess House's own website. And I just find that a little bit interesting. Now the company was notified of this, but their response is lackluster to say the least. The council to PH told Tina that they have over 20,000 independent sales consultants. And although all of them sign an agreement that says they won't engage in deceptive, false, unethical, or unlawful recruiting practices, they say they just can't control everyone. They also go on to list why the screenshots aren't as bad as Tina claims. They say that most of the sampling is from distributors, not the company itself. And some of the sampling is dated in 2013 and 14, three to four years before the complaint was made, by the way. They also said that Tina didn't have proof all the sellers were active and calling the claims misleading was a stretch. But seriously, just because someone doesn't shout, you'll earn a thousand dollars guaranteed, that doesn't mean that they can't make misleading income claims. I'm not sure how Princess House defines misleading, but I do believe these sellers' posts absolutely fit that definition. Plus, since when did the age of these posts matter? That's like saying, oh, you can't be mad at me because I lied to you about potential earnings at your job, but that was three years ago. Like, yeah, you can still be upset about that no matter how old the posts are. If anything, it makes it worse that Tina had both old and new posts because it actually demonstrates a pattern of behavior from various sellers. Princess House's response is ridiculous to say the least, an absolute joke even. One minute they're arguing about how Tina doesn't have a leg to stand on when criticizing them. And the next they say, oh, but if you actually see any real issues, you can contact us. Otherwise this is poor conduct and we don't respect you. Meanwhile, they're sitting over there with a freaking income slider on the become a representative page of their website, towing the line between making false promises and advertising like a tightrope walker. Unfortunately, you can't really expect anything different from them, at least not once you meet the CEO. Back in 2018, Connie Tang was interviewed for a Medium article. Now, this happens all the time. MLM CEOs pitching their companies is nothing new or particularly surprising. But in this case, the headline caught my eye because it was interesting. And it reads, I am living proof of the American dream. Now, truthfully, I'm a bit of a doomer, okay? When you research and talk about this type of content all the time, life becomes pretty depressing if we're being honest. And in my opinion, I think the American dream is pretty much in tatters, if not outright dead. Income inequality is greater than ever and positive spirit and hard work just aren't going to buy you a home with a white picket fence anymore. I mean, hell, it's not gonna buy a house, a townhouse, a condo, a nothing. We're all just gonna freaking live in apartments, I guess, for the rest of our lives. Now, I'm not saying that it's impossible, but I am saying it's getting pretty damn close. So then what makes Connie proof that the dream supposedly still exists? Well, according to Connie, her parents were Chinese immigrants. She came to the US at only 10 months old and grew up learning all about determination, accountability, passion, and respect. She had even written a book about her values to teach others how they can navigate their professional and personal lives with grace and without fear. The thing is, there's a lot of great points that Connie makes, but there's also a lot of hypocrisies too. For starters, she says that you need to live fearlessly. 
And I'm gonna be real with you chiefs here, that's much easier to say from a CEO position than it is when you're failing to earn or even losing money at the bottom of a downline. Like it's really easy to be very inspirational when you already have your needs met. But when you're still trying to get your needs met and earn money to literally just feel secure in being alive, it's not so easy. I'm not gonna deny that her story might be an inspiring one, but when it's used as an inspiration for an MLM, it becomes a lot less wholesome. After all, it's not as if Connie started working as a distributor for one of these direct selling companies. She worked at Clinique and Lancome before taking an executive role. CEOs and these kinds of positions don't necessarily rely on any kinds of parties or downlines for their salary. Secondly, it really just grosses me out personally that Connie talks about how difficult it was for her family to overcome the challenges immigrants face while all Princess House relies on is immigrants and Hispanics to sell their products. The chances of making any money with an MLM is very slim to nothing. You're far more likely to lose money. That's just statistically the way this goes. And I'm sorry, but that's not a matter of opinion. That's literally the way this is with every single MLM I've ever talked about ever. Once you account for expenses, almost everything goes red. And sometimes even before expenses, earnings are pretty low too. Now, only those at the tippity tippity top of these little triangle shaped business models can earn anything. But here's our girl, Connie, using the Hispanic market, exploiting immigrants that may have to buy into this American dream language and using her own history to relate to them to say that she's living proof that their dreams can come true too. And it's absolute bullshit. I can bet money, I'm not a betting person, but I could bet money that had her family moved to the US, immigrated here and signed up for Princess House, I'm pretty confident that Connie's life would have been very different from where she is right now. Personally, from what I've seen of her book and in her interviews, Connie Tang is a generic motivational speaker. Since Connie did grow up with a Hispanic babysitter, she also speaks Spanish fluently on stage. So I'm sure that also helps with the distributors too. Unfortunately, I have yet to hear her give any concrete advice that isn't obvious like, you know, dreaming is not enough. You have to take that dream and you've got to shape it into something you can visualize in great detail. Like, I'm sorry, but telling an audience to shape a dream into something they can visualize isn't super helpful. These motivational but hollow speeches are super common within MLMs. They seem so inspirational on the surface, but when you really get down to the details, there's no substance whatsoever. Now, while I could end here for the day and say, here we go, classic MLM that scams consumers. And in my opinion, you should stay away from them. There's just one more aspect that we need to go over, the lawsuits. There is one large case you'll find when it comes to Princess House, the MLM versus the Lindsay's. Now this took place in the 1990s. So as a disclaimer, I've really got no idea if Princess House behaves this exact same way today, but I think it's reasonable to assume that not much has changed because of what we see demonstrated in this court case. It's some pretty clear cut MLM behavior. Simply put, getting pissed off at distributors that leave the company. Allow me to summarize. Princess House had a couple sellers working for them, otherwise known as the Lindsay's. They'd been there for some time too. One source says about 15 years but problems at Princess House led to a substantial drop in their income. And the Lindsay's were not alone by any means. Apparently some of their witnesses, former PH top sellers even testified that the problems at the MLM meant they just couldn't make money there anymore. Now it's not really clear what the issues were exactly, but safe to say these sellers never owned their own business. Otherwise, why would they care if Princess House was having issues? If they're business owners, it's not like someone else is going to impact their own company. While some of the sellers considered leaving or moved on to go somewhere else, the Lindsay's decided to pick up a second job selling with Park Lane, a jewelry MLM. And is that a little shady? I mean, you could argue that it is, I guess. The Lindsay's can tell whatever downline they have to join them over in this new MLM too. Assuming that the downline listens, or if any of them leave Princess House altogether, then that leaves Princess House with a substantial customer, <clears throat> employee loss. Even though kitchenware and jewelry are two totally different things, maybe some of those representatives don't wanna be in both companies. That said, I really don't think an MLM has any right to complain. Has Princess House forgotten what their website says? Work whenever you want, wherever you want. They promise all these laid back benefits. There's nothing on their site that says, sell your soul to us and only us and you can't have other jobs or we're gonna sue you. But to an extent, that's kind of exactly what they did. Princess House was pissed at the Lindsay's and said they were trying to undercut their business and contractual opportunities. But in a turn of events, the Lindsay's then went after Park Lane for breach of contract too. Apparently Park Lane promised the family that when PH sued, they'd cover the legal costs. But that's not what happened. 
According to the Lindsays, they told them, you're part of the Park Lane family. We're going to defend you whether it costs $7,000 or a million and $7,000. It's just a harassment suit. But then they never actually did pay those attorney's fees. And honestly, like nobody won here except Park Lane. Princess House lost some sellers to a different MLM. The Lindsays had to pay attorney's fees to fight it. And Park Lane acted like they cared about their new people while refusing to actually put their money where their mouths were. Allegedly, of course. No matter whose side you're on here, all three of them came out the other side looking shady, questionable, and a part of a business model that I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. As far as I can tell, this is the only noteworthy lawsuit involving Princess House. I've said before that it's ridiculous and pathetic to see MLMs battle each other in court, and I stand by that. This case should have never made it to a court to begin with. And while I won't say that this won't ever happen again or won't happen with a W2 employee situation, it's not nearly as common. It seems like every other MLM has a case like this, but I can't say that I've ever seen Target or McDonald's or whoever make a habit of suing employees for simply working another job. All in all, no, this MLM isn't as bad as some others I've covered, but I think that's truly saying something because at the end of the day, they still take advantage of people that don't recognize how predatory they are. Their CEO uses vague preppy promotional language and they're littered with income claims. And this is one of the better ones. I think they're a great example of no matter how relatively clean of an MLM you might be, the business model is still trash and will still exploit your downline. But with all of that being said, that is where we're going to end today's episode of Multi-Level Mondays. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest episodes. I wanna thank you so much for tuning in with me today. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.